In the world of motorsports, our next guest is a real trailblazer. Jamie Little shattered the glass ceiling as the first woman pit reporter for the Indianapolis 500. Then again, as the first woman to cover both the Daytona 500 and Indianapolis 500. She was also the first woman to cover Supercross and Motocross. Well, now she is breaking the glass ceiling again as the first woman to do play-by-play -play for a NASCAR series. And I spoke with Jamie Little about being the first over and over again. I have been very lucky to be in the right situation at the right time, you know, that I was given that opportunity because it doesn't mean that I'm the only woman that could do it. It was just maybe I was the one that was willing to push. I was the one that was willing to ask for that opportunity and I was in the right place at the right time that somebody said, yes, let's give her a shot. We've never been down this road before. Jamie is the one and, and I've embraced it and with it, I, I know that a lot of responsibility comes with it and um, that's why I love to talk about it because I want to you know let women know and young girls know that if you want something and just because you haven't seen somebody that looks like you in that role doesn't mean you can't ask for it and be the first but did you ever think that because i know that you thought well you know this is a spot for the veteran men i've watched <laughs> them there's nothing available so somewhere once upon a time you did think that absolutely you know when you look at your position like as a pit reporter okay so what's the next step the next step is being play-by-play -play, being the lead voice on a broadcast well i don't know if i'd ever want to do that job i don't know if i could do it because that always goes to the men that have been in this sport and been covering it for so long so i'm just going to stay in my lane well finally i don't know what it was something about 2020 and just turning over a new leaf and things being so different somebody called me and said listen other women are getting these opportunities in sports. You need to be the one to take it to the next level in NASCAR. And I literally hung up with him, went home and emailed my boss and said, I want to do play by play. I'm ready. All I needed was that kick in the butt to say, you need to go for it. And I called him and a week later, he's like, what would you think of being the voice of the Arkham and Ard series? And I was floored. Absolutely. Bring it on. But you know what? I've heard that you've always been a fiery woman, even as a little <laughs> girl when you were working on a ranch and saved up enough money to buy a horse that you were raised by a single mom in uh, Lake Tahoe and also Vegas, and that she taught you to be this incredible woman that you are. My mom, she's an incredible woman. She, she's a fighter, you know, single mom doing what it takes to get by, but she always taught me you know, things are genderless. It wasn't like, well, men do that, and this is what I do as a mom. It was like, no, we do everything we need to do to get by. And she was also, my mom has this great story. She was a seamstress um, for one of the shows in Lake Tahoe. She was making the costumes for the showgirls. And literally, when I was like four years old, they came to her and said, we really want to see what you have. If you have potential, we want to have you in the show. My mom literally learned to become a dancer and was the lead in a show in Lake Tahoe. So those were the things that I looked at like, well, nothing stopped her. Why can't I do this too? So it was, she was a perfect example for me and why I'm here. So where did the love come and the passion for motocross? Yeah, it's funny um, because I was an only child and I was just kind of, a tomboy. I was just, I, I don't know, just from birth, I've always been a tomboy and into the things that the boys like to do. And when you're raised in Lake Tahoe, you live outside, whether it's riding horses or you're hanging out with your buddies that have a dirt bike or a four wheeler. And I just love that stuff. And it didn't leave when I became a teenager. Sure, I found boys and all those things that girls do, but I never lost that passion for racing. And when I was 18 and I realized, okay, what am I doing here? Am I going to college? What's my focus? focus something told me you need to be the one bringing these stories of these riders to the screen why not there's men doing it you love it so much and god knows there's got to be a lot of women that love it as well and literally i found my career through my passion in racing i have watched you handle harrison burton and noah grayson and <laughs> daniel hemrick and their altercations i did victory lane i've got a driver with tears in his eyes so excited that he just won the race and i look over and there's something going down and you could tell when there's a nascar fight like all the teams get involved so i go running i there's just something about that adrenaline rush that i want to hear from both sides what's going on what are you guys thinking and i get in the middle of it so i've been in the middle of many fights in nascar racing is so emotional and as a reporter 
you can't help but feel those emotions too, whether it's interviewing somebody that wins or somebody that got in a fight or somebody that just wrecked. We're seeing more and more diversity within NASCAR, maybe not where it should be, but it's coming along both with women and minorities. Absolutely. And we've gone through a huge process in the last year and, and Bubba has a lot to do with it. Bubba Wallace, I think he's got a lot of fans out there. What he went through last year, what NASCAR has done to step up and say, we're embracing everyone. We want everyone to come to our races, no matter who you are, no matter what you look like, no matter what your gender. And, you know, they banned the Confederate flag. I think that was the first and foremost thing that had to happen in this sport. They did it and it's been the best thing. I mean, we We've got Michael Jordan and Pitbull as team owners. We have such a diverse fan base out there. When you look in the stands now, I mean, the families that you see that you never saw in NASCAR necessarily before, um, and more women. So we're in a really good place, and it is all about inclusion. It's a great sport to be part of. It's a great sport to root for and to relate to your your driver. Um, and and it's we're just in a really good place now. It's the first time that you did it back in February. Were you nervous? Did you have the butterflies or was the adrenaline just going yes the first time doing play-by-play -play, it was a little bit of everything it's like thankful you know for my history in tv that you know how to how to harness those emotions but it was something so new and when you feel the pressure and the weight of a lot of people watching because they want to see if a woman truly can do it whether they admit that or not people are watching to see what does a woman sound like calling a race? What is she going to say and do? What's her style going to be? I just wanted to knock it out of the park because I'm knocking that glass ceiling out and I want opportunity for women coming up. And I want producers and you know executives to see that women are capable. So if she's the right person for the job, put her in. Congratulations. So much pride, what you're doing for so many people. I say yay for you and thank oh. you. It's been a real pleasure, Jamie. Thank you, Lori. I appreciate you for having me on. Dynamite. Anyway, you can catch Jamie this weekend as pit reporter for Toyota Owners 400 at Richmond Speedway Sunday right here on Fox 5. Then you can watch her doing her play-by-play -play next Saturday from Talladega Super Speedway on Fox Sports 1. She looks like Sandra Bullock. She even wears her <laughs> the hair, hair like right? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was like Sandra. I'm like, who is she? And well-respected. She know. earned that spot.